Howdy, I'm Scott of Scotty's Gun Works. Uh, we'll be doing a little bit of bluing today, kind of a follow-up bluing video. Uh, I know the first one I've done was a bluing video, and uh, you know, and it, it turned out really good. Uh, I thought maybe what I might do in this video here is maybe go into a little bit further detail, trying to you know kind of help uh, people kind of understand the process. Maybe uh, it's the Brian Ailes uh, bluing setup. Uh, you know, as far as the salts and the chemicals are concerned, but uh, anyway, we're gonna do a little blue, and I ain't got very many in blue today. Um, uh, so what I'm gonna do, uh, I got plenty to blue. I just uh, my time frame here that I wanted to do is uh, I think I got like four of them I needed to get done by the end of the week, you know, and then I'm gonna get back on my regular schedule. Christmas coming up and all that. But anyway, uh, I thought I'll take this opportunity to make a quick video and you know, kind of kind of walk everybody through it. And um, maybe kind of give you more of a understanding how this works uh, for those of you who uh, are starting your shops up, uh, say in your garage or something like that, and you want to get the brown ales, uh chemicals and stuff. Well, this right here may kind of put it down in layman's terms, maybe help you understand it a little bit better. Uh, most important to be safe with it, uh, keeping everything out of the environment. You don't need to be in the environment. Well, all right. Well, I'll uh, uh, go ahead and get the process started. Okay, the first thing I like to do is make sure that, uh, you know, I get everything uh, clean and out of my way because we want a good walking path. There's what we got to blue today. Uh, I hadn't even started the tanks up yet. Of course, the first thing you'll do is you'll get you a uh, something to break the salts up. That's very important. Of course, I ain't got my gloves on either, so I'm going to just kind of walk you through it and get my gloves on and I'm gonna kind of actually you know do some work and kind of show you my procedure I've got my 909 already set up right here I hadn't got it turned on yet uh, I hadn't got my hot water in my uh, vat yet so I'll go ahead and get uh, the safety equipment on which will be my rubber gloves uh, and then we'll go ahead and break up some salts and then start the uh, the fire okay I hope you can see me here I, I ain't got a cameraman down here but anyway uh, what you want to do is put your face shield always and of course you want to wear rubber gloves so the hand I'm going to be using to crush the salts is the one I got the glove on the other hand I'm holding the camera so we'll just be real careful about it and it's really nothing to it you, just want, you don't want to splash it and that stuff gets really hard so you just want to kind of, I got me a thing I've made here out of an old gun barrel and an old welded hammer and, you know, just something to crush it. But you, you know, you can use the, I think right now they just have a fork especially with this. But you just want to crush up the salt. They're cold right now. And when they get cold, they turn into a, they crystallize. Turn into like a, a chunk of salt, I guess. Let me see if I can pull some of it up. You can see it as it, being broke up in there. See the chunks floating around in there. And it's definitely going to take two hands to do this. Well, I'll go ahead and crush them up and show you what it looks like after I've crushed it up. But yeah, you just basically use common sense, just break them up real fine to where you can run your your pick through it. Right now you can't. Hangs up. So I'll break them up and then I'll show you. This is the Okay, I believe I've got all the blue and salts broke up like they're supposed to be. Now I can take the uh, tool and I can run it quite easily across the bottom of the tank. Got it all off the sides pretty much, you know, back into the tank. Got them all crushed up real nice. Now it's like a... Just like muddy water, I guess, at this point, you know, and ain't got no big chunks in it anymore. The reason why you want to break in big chunks up is because what they'll do is they'll heat up and then they'll bust, you know, and then they'll splatter all over the place on you and in your eyes and everything else if you ain't got your safety equipment on. But you just want to keep them in the tank. That's what I like about this great big old tank here. I don't ever lose any of it. But anyway, even in this big old tank, you want to break it up really good where you can take one hand. I just let it flow back and forth, you know, before we couldn't do that. 
that tells me that I got them good and broke up. And now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna light the flame. This is a, the only time you should light that flame is when you've got these broke up. The only time, don't light it while they're not broke up. Cause I'm gonna tell you, you're just asking for trouble if you do that. It's gonna make a mess, it's gonna get all over the place and you're still gonna have to break them up. Might as well do it beforehand. Rynell's uh, directions tell you that. Uh, so when they're broke up, then and only then, you should light up your tanks. So I'll go ahead and get the flames started and uh, we'll move on to the next. Okay, we've got the flame going now. This is another important thing you want to remember. While your flame's going, you ain't got to do it all the time, but this is periodically just kind of take and stir it up. Don't slosh it. Just kind of smoothly stir it up. Sloshing is no good, especially when it gets up to almost 300 degrees, because it's going to boil anyway. You'll have a nice little smooth rolling boil, so no sloshing. That's the main thing. Keep it all smooth and easy. Got our flame going. Got it adjusted about right. Got the fans going. Basically, it doesn't put out any poison, I guess. It's mostly humidity. Got a thermometer over there. Of course, you know, it's best to wear, you know, a face mask. Uh, definitely a face shield. Uh, but it just basically just sits here nice and easy and heats up. And Got a thermometer here. Of course, my operating temperature is about 2... 292 something like that. It's got a little block on the thermometer as you can see uh... Anyway when it reaches that You should have a nice little rolling bowl nothing violent just a nice little rolling bowl without having to Mess with it at all and you just adjust it with water And the uh, problem I was having was my flame was dancing around too much and I was wasting a lot of pro uh, propane especially since I got my new fans um, they really pull a lot of air through here and uh, anyway the fan was almost blowing it out it was just blow dancing all over the place when you got a dancing flame your heat it just takes a lot more time to heat it up it's gonna take about an hour right now because I got this big old tank here you know usually about 45 minutes you know with a regular tank but anyway what I did is uh, I just did some experimenting and I finally just took the door and just cut the door as you can see. You know, you can open it up. Of course, the flame gets kind of dancy. And I can definitely tell the difference in the airflow. So I just took and cut the door. I got a two piece door here, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll lock in, with, you know. That way I got a nice airflow coming right here behind the head, out the, uh, fans there and I ain't got to worry about it really you know breathing anything so anyway I'll just sit here for about an hour and periodically I'll come over here and I'll just kind of give it a stir and I can still feel a little thickness in there of course the hotter that gets the more it's going to turn into like water in other words it's going to be real thin you'll be able to just drag it through here without any problem whatsoever all my salts are broken up all up into the corners that's why i got this square thing here where it'll fit right up in the corners there you know and that way I'm, I'm sure to crush up every bit of it and usually what i do is when i'm waiting on that right there and i got me a timer set up here i got this right here set up for 30 minutes of course when it beeps it's probably not going to be hot yet and i'll just hit it again for another 30 minutes uh, Right now is a good time to get your 909 tank set up. Uh, what I usually do is I thoroughly clean the guns before I even uh, polish them. I mean, I clean them and clean them and clean them. So they're pretty clean right now. So I'm able to uh, use this 909 about two or three bluing sessions. What I do is I just kind of make me a little log book here, you know, of uh, the last time it was changed. And last time I blued was 11 1 first of this month. It's already the 14th, uh, and I changed the uh, bluing, or not the bluing, but the 909 den, so it's not really all that old. 
uh, what I'll do basically is just put my thermometer in there and heat it up and uh, just keep the temperature regulated and uh, I can usually use it two to three bluing sessions sometimes even four I can always tell when it starts to get really dirty and start turning turning really dirty looking I guess that's the best way to put it uh, I got my cold water rinse system right here I just cut this on right here come over to the ball valve and cut that on and it just fills up and cleans itself out I got an Oxlake 84 tank back there I'm going to set up for the future. We'll get into that later. Right now we're on the Oxlake number 7 right here. Again, I'll just come over here and just kind of stir it up a little bit, you know. And uh, right here is an excellent time while you got that thing going. I'll cut my hot water on. I'll close it off. And I'll go ahead and fill the hot water boiling tank. And the reason why I do that is because I got the flame coming off the bluing tank and it kind of helps keep the uh, hot water boiling tank up. And that saves me a little fuel, a little time, because it'll be about 30 minutes after I blue when I'm ready to use this hot water tank. Of course, then I'll light the flame up, you know, probably about 10 minutes before I take the bluing out of the bluing salt and it'll be ready to go. And then I'll just dip it in there and I'll go over it with you here as I go. It'll kind of give you more of an idea why we use the hot water boil. Uh, basically it's going to boil out any blue and it may be left behind you know but I'm putting hot water in it right now and it'll stay hot and uh, we just kind of watch everything you know I'll fill it up to where I want it to be filled anyway I won't bore you with all that I'll just take periodically stir the blue in while it's heating up and just basically relax, take a, an inventory of what I need to do, and it always falls out into place. All right, heating up really good. It's getting easier now for this thing to go through there. It's probably about close to 100 degrees now, so we still got a little ways to go. We're probably about 10 minutes into the heat up. I got my hot water tank filled, so it's just kind of, you know, catching some heat you know kind of heating up a little bit of course i'll have to light it up you know to get it to my boiling point i hope y'all can hear me i know those fans are going i'm trying to speak up but i got to keep those fans on uh, you know getting back to the uh prep work it's only going to look your blue it's only going to look as well as you prep your metal in other words super clean is what you want um we definitely want to make sure everything's good and clean they finally got the hold which is what you put on there after you polish it so it won't rust back up they finally got that back down at Brian nails i mean i was having to fit had to go back and polish on blue and dave because it rust back up you know uh so thank god they finally got the hold and i've got it in the polishing room uh, in a tank one of the white fiberglass tanks i got three gallons in that and what I do is I just dip the parts in it this time and I got a little racket they drain off and that way I'm sure to get a good coat now the hold on there and man I can go a month and it won't even it won't even rust which is a blessing but uh yeah want to make sure that's good and clean you're going to the 909 right here you know and that'll clean the hold off and anything you might have left behind any polishing residue and of course then after the hold into the hot cold water rinse to get the 909 off Rinse it off real good, leave it in about a minute maybe. Then out of that, into the bluing, and we'll demonstrate that. I'll try to, like I said, I'm only a, a one-man show today, so it's gonna be kind of difficult for me to, you know, kind of show you in, in action. I don't have my bipod here, and if I did, it still couldn't probably uh, show you exactly what I wanna show you. So I'm trying to explain it to you the best I can, and plus, you know, try to show you as well. Uh, Anyway, got a good flow of air coming through here, but it's not hitting the flame. We're just waiting on it to heat up. Oh yeah, heating up nicely. Everything's heating up really good. Um, getting back to the whole dipping tank, I would take y'all in there and show you that, uh, my setup for that, but it's basically this tank with hole poured in it with a top over it and a rack over that. Basically like my oil tank here, so it's not as fancy. 
but it does a really good job. And the reason why I'm not going to go in there is because I can't stress enough about safety. You definitely don't want to walk away from an open flame like this. I mean, I got it set up to where it's nice and safe and haven't had a bit of trouble. Been doing this down here for about 20 years and, you know, haven't had a bit of trouble. The uh, reason why is because I don't walk away. I stay with it from start to finish. Uh, got fire extinguishers, hose pipes with you know, water and stuff like that on hand. So everything is really safe, uh, but I don't take it for granted. I keep my eyes open and I uh, just watch everything. Uh, so I can't stress enough about safety because, you know, you want to do this right because you want to be doing this, you know, for years to come and you can't stress enough about safety. And this is part of the lesson of bluing. I know it ain't really stressed enough. We gotta make sure we keep everything safe around here. Uh, and that's why I have no one working for me. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with the uh, employees and stuff like that, but I don't know. I just don't trust nobody else in here doing this but me. Not that they can't do a good job. Just if something goes wrong, I'll know who did it if I ain't got nobody working in here. Uh, I know that sounds kind of silly, but that's just kind of the way it is. Uh, but anyway, heating up nicely. So we'll just keep uh, making progress. Quick note uh, concerning the flame here. It gets back to the uh, the door there. Uh, I mean, see how nice and smooth it's running, nice and consistent. No real dancing around, you know, which is what you want. But yet when we open the door, Now we see how it's getting really radical and jumping around all over the place and it's not as smooth as it was because there's wind blowing it around. So yeah, when we close it. Now then we see how more consistent and smooth it is as it burns and you know heats up the tank evenly all the way across. When it's dancing around, you know, it's not hitting in a constant area. It's just moving around all over the place. It's taking longer to heat up, burning up more fuel. This part of the lesson here because I know for a long time, you know, uh, I just took little things like this for granted. Uh, the more sufficient your shop is set up, the more money you're going to make and the less work you're going to have to do. Uh, the old saying, work smart, not hard. And that's just kind of one of the things that might help you out. Uh, you know, I got the door cut up kind of high. That way I know there ain't nothing going to hit the flame. But yet, I can still stand back here and get a good uh, breeze blowing behind my head. Blowing anything, it might do me harm out the vents, out the fans there. Pick those fans up at Lowe's. Basically, they're just attic fans. They have a, uh, a thermostat made onto them. I just took the thermostat off and wired them in straight. Got a switch here that operates them. Want to keep them going, but it's just a common sense kind of way of setting it up, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's just a little lesson you might want to kind of take note of uh, as far as your propane and uh, fuel savage, and it's going to save a little time too because it's going to heat it up a little quicker than having a dancing flame. And let me also add that it's better really to have a concrete floor. Uh, it's easier for cleaning. I mean, you can put it in a wooden building and all that, that's fine, you know. I always like my vats all grouped up together like this, you know. I got plenty of room there to reach over them and all, you know. And I've got some heat shields built, you know, to keep any flames from coming up and catching me off guard. So I ain't got to worry about getting burnt. Of course, I got the tongs there, you know. But, you know, I reach into that tank back there whenever I get it in operation. I, you know, I can just reach everything and I'm still strong enough to be able to pick that basket up with those two tongs without dropping anything. Uh, so, another safety tip, you know, I've just always liked to grip them together like that. Keep that old tank away from the flame, though. Just, you know, it, it reads in the Brownell's uh, instructions. You don't want to put that uh, oil tank next to your flame and you don't definitely want to heat it up that's for sure don't never do that because it works quite well without heating it up uh first gun you stick in there it's going to heat it up and then it's going to you know liquefy and it's going to turn a, a different color instead of being a light brown it'll turn a dark brown but uh 
Yeah, remember, no heating up the oil. Uh, try to stay away from that dancing flame, you know. Of course, like I said, it's kind of hard for me to do this without a cameraman, but uh, just always make sure when you are doing this that you wear some kind of long sleeve uh, jacket like this one I've got on. I've got several of these. They all look the same. Uh, this is a clean one here. I've got a mirror down here too. I always set up that way I can, you know, if I have to look at, you know, a gun in the mirror, you know, from the other side without turning it all around, you know, I need to clean the mirror. But anyway, uh, this is the best way I can show you, you know, the best way to dress for bluing. Now they have got a uh, an apron. As a matter of fact, I got one right here, and that's a good idea as well. It comes with a kit from Brian Nails. It's a neopon. I think it's a like a rubber apron. But anyway. Uh, I've always did real good with this right here. And I keep my sleeves rolled up, but then again, I've got gloves. They go all the way up to my sleeves, you know. Um, so I'm protected there. But uh, anyway, just another safety tip, I guess. Always wear your face shield, the face shield here, and uh, I got a little respirator, a little dust mask I wear uh, most of the time. I don't have it on right yet. But uh, anyway, as these things come to me, I'll share them with you. Safety tips, you know, and the way I do things. Okay, still heating the tanks up. Uh, I'm right here uh, in the shop area now. Uh, definitely don't walk too far away from that. I always kind of stay in this little general area here. I used to keep the door open, sit right there in that stool and kind of watch it. But, of course, it just works out so much better for the flame to keep the door shut. Uh, basically how this door works, I just took a regular door and just cut it down the middle. And, you know, I can lock it together, you know, and then open both of them up at the same time. But, I'll kind of give you some ideas on what you might want to do, you know, when you get ready to set your bluing room up, you know, if you got a building, the door that goes into the building, you might want to cut it off and make sure it's secure. Uh, just some ideas. And that's really the purpose of this bluing video, to, you know, kind of give you all the uh, tips that I've uh, learned along the way to kind of help you out when you uh, set your bluing room up. Maybe it'll help you out. Of course, I'm sure you'll have some new ideas as well. So. Okay, heating up really good. We're almost halfway there. We've got about a minute left on our counter and then we're gonna set it for another 30 minutes and it'll be heated up within that range. Uh, usually about 45 minutes with this new uh, airflow system I got. But uh, I wanted to kind of bring this to your attention too. This right here might help you out. Now I notice right now I'm not even at 200 degrees yet and I'm starting to get a little bit of a, not really a boil, but hints of a boil, I guess if you will. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. Basically what it all boils down to is this. Uh, when I get up to uh, 292, right there at the little block on the uh, thermometer, and it's not boiling, then I know I got too much blue and salt in there. In this case here, it looks like I'm going to have to add some salt. Uh, that's how I regulate that. It's called sweetening the tank. And I just got a bucket of salts right here. And of course, this is where you want to wear your little uh, dust mask. And I got a little scoop in there. And what I'll do is, is I, like for instance, right now we're almost at 200 degrees. I'll probably wait till it gets about 250. And if it's really boiling at 250, then I'll just put a little uh, blue and salt in there and then it'll stop boiling. Then I'll wait a few minutes. Now I'll just watch for that bowl to kind of come back again. And I'll keep doing this until it reaches my operating temperature and the bowl is not a violent bowl. It's just an easy going kind of bowl. A little bit, a little bit more uh, agitated than what you see here. That's how you would kind of regulate that. I mean, to mix your tanks up when you first start out, I think it's like uh, 10 pounds of salt per gallon of water. Pour your water in there, you know, and and pour you 10 pounds of salts in there and you know, do it real slow. I always mix mine up in a bucket, but now that you've got them all mixed, you'll have to sweeten them every now and then, at least I do. Uh, 
I just kind of watch for that boil. That's how I regulate how much salt I need to put in there. And when it reaches operating temperature, you don't want it to be violently boiling. You want it to have a nice roll about it. Uh, but if it starts boiling before you reach your operating temperature, say at 250, then it, you may want to add a little salts in there, blue and salts. I'll say number seven, and just kind of regulate it that way. Uh, if you follow what I'm saying, uh, right now we got a little bit of a boil, and we're not even at 200. So what we'll do is we'll just keep our eyes on it, and we may have to add some salts to it. We may not, I don't know. But I don't ever do anything until I got this tank here ready to go. Well, I'll wait about 15 minutes into it for uh, 15 minutes into the bluing process before I get this tank here ready. But I don't ever do anything as far as putting a gun uh, in the bluing until I know it's at operating temperature and I got the right boil to it. Of course, the first gun, you know, I'll heat this right here up first. Let me rephrase that. Uh, after this right here is after I'm satisfied with this right here then I'll go ahead and light this right here up for the first gun and then afterwards it's about 15 minutes before the gun comes out I'll light it back up that's how I do that and we'll kind of go over that uh, first gun I'll wait till it gets to the operating temperature when I'm happy with it light this right here up get it ready then I'll go ahead and put the first gun in here the whole time that right there is ready to go then after about 10 minutes of here, go into the cold water rinse. When I get it all rinsed off, leave it in there about a minute, no more, maybe two, at the very most. Rinse it real good and come out of here and then into the bluing tanks. But that's where it all really revolves around. You want to make sure this right here has got the right boil at the right temperature. And you regulate that with, not with the heat, but with the salts at this point. And then you'll regulate the heat, you know, when you get it up to your right boil with the cold water. You know, by cooling it down, by sticking ladles of water in there. Uh, I know the directions walk you through all this, but I, I'm trying to show you as we go. Kind of help you to understand them a little more, maybe. But there we are so far. All right, still slowly climbing up. That's really getting where it's just going through there like it ain't nothing now. Well, right now we're at 200 degrees. I'll just let it settle and I'll kind of watch for the bowl to start forming. And that'll uh, give me any idea whether I need to add salts or not. Heating up really good. We're already at 250 degrees and we really hadn't got much of a boil, which that's a good sign when we're at 250 degrees and we don't really have no boil going on. That's good. That shows that we've got the right amount of salts in there. Uh, so we're almost at our operating temperature. If it starts boiling real bad, at this point, then I will just add a little salts in there, and that'll, that'll, that'll calm it down. And I keep doing that until I get to the operating temperature, but at this point, I believe we're going to make it to the operating temperature without having to add any salts. So it's probably still balanced out from the last blue and run I did. Uh, you don't have to do this every time, but I was kind of hoping that maybe we could add some in here, and that way I could kind of demonstrate how it's done. But basically, this boils down to that boil. So we'll just wait until we get to our operating temperature. We got a little bit of a boil going on right now, but uh, we're not at our operating temperature yet. We'll look at it when we get up to that temperature. All right. Been almost an hour. Uh, we're right at our operating temperature. I'd say about another 10 minutes tops. We should be there. Uh, flame's still doing really good. Uh, no real violent roll as far as my boiling is concerned, so that tells me that we've got a, probably about the right amount of salts in it. Uh, when we do reach our operating temperature, and I've got a really, really 
violent boil. I may add a little bit of salt just to kind of tame it down a little bit, or maybe turn the heat down just a little bit. Uh, the main thing is that we got to boil when we reach our operating temperature. And if it's too violent, then you have to set to turn your heat down just a little bit, or maybe add water. I always just turn the heat down just a little, uh, because it will it'll foam way up. So but right now it's looking about right. Okay, we're now pretty much at our operating temperature. We got a boil going on. That's about right. Of course, it's going to get a little bit uh, more violent as it heats up a little bit more. So our balance between the water and the salt is about right. We're right now at close to 300 degrees. We're at about 192 something or two. I'm sorry, 292. Uh, and it's not a real violent boil. Of course, you know, the hotter it gets, the more it will get violent. So uh, we didn't have to add any salts this time. So at this point, I will cut the heat down just a little bit. But I think what I'll do is I will demonstrate, I will demonstrate how you'd cool this down. Right now we're, we're right at operating temperature. And since I'm gonna have a few minutes anyway, it'll have a chance to heat back up. But here's the proper way to cool it down. Take your ladle of water, don't just pour it in there. Everybody like pouring water on a grease fire. You wanna ease it in there like it's right here first, and just kind of tilt it as you go, go along the bottom of the, uh, the length of the tank. And you'll do this several times until the temperature starts lowering. Ease it in there, no, no big hurry. Just let it kind of pour. Hope y'all can see that. Anyway, I believe you get the idea. That's how you'd properly cool it down. You don't really use the flame, although you do adjust it a little bit. Now you can see that that's the proper boil right there. And we're right at uh, 300, 290, 292 degrees. That's our proper boil at this point. I'll take this contraption out. Put it over here in its place. And there's no need in trying to uh, stir it up because there's our proper bowl. Now, we're just above uh, operating temperature. And now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut the flame on down a little bit because I know it's gonna stay right there. It's ready to blue. I can see guns in there right now and it'll be perfect. And that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you keep everything like it's supposed to be. You want to make sure your temperature's right. You got the right ratio of bluing in there. Uh, first up, now I'm going to come over here and light up the 909 tank. Get it up to operating temperature. Put the first gun in there. Let it, let it sit in there for about 10 minutes. Then take it out of here into the rinse tank. Get it all rinsed off real good, about two minutes worth. Then out of there, into the bluing tanks. And it'll stay in the bluing tank for 30 minutes. It'll come out of the bluing tank back into the rinse tank. But what I like to do, about 15 minutes into the bluing, uh, I'll usually take it out and put it in the rinse tank and I'll check everything, see how everything's going. Make sure that uh, there's no stripes forming on the bottom where it's sitting on the rack. I'll move the gun, slide it a little bit, you know, kind of kind of agitate it a little bit. Uh, that ensures that there's no stripes, you know, because if it's laying on metal, it's not going to blue. But I'll do it that way. And then I'll go back in there for the last 15 minutes, which equals 30 minutes. Then I'll come out of there, back into the rinse tank. I'll just kind of look at it, making sure there ain't no problems. If I do see a problem, I'll go back into the bluing tank for probably about 10, 15 minutes. Then back into the rinse tank, and at this point, this stuff here will be boiling, which is hot water. I'll, we'll go over the light up of that. And then I'll put it in there for about 10 minutes, and I'll get everything on these timers up here. You know, you can see I got 909 hot water boil, and then the blue insulation, which is 30 minutes. Uh, just like I said, I took what Brian Ells has got, and they got an excellent instruction plan here, and I just kind of modified it a little bit, kind of modified the tanks a little. Uh, then after there, I take them out of the hot water rinse for 10 minutes. It goes into the blue and displacing oil, or displacing oil, I'm sorry. 
water displacing oil. I'll say it right here in a minute. And I even put the label on there. That'll remind me what I need to put in here. A little expensive, but in the long run, it's cheap. I've done experimented with motor oil and WD-40, you name it. Don't nothing work any better than this water displacement oil. I'm, just not, I'm not trying to advertise for brown ales or anything like that, but I'm one of them people, I'm straight up. If it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. And their stuff works. They done done all the research. So I just stick with everything that goes with it. Got a good boil going right there. Our temperature's still up where it's supposed to be. You can see it on the black mark. So I'll go ahead and cut the camera off, get this lit up, and we'll continue to go through the process. Got the 909 lit up. You can see that it's burning right now. Uh, got my flame shield there, so you won't see no flame over here, which is good. And while it's heating up, I'll take a little stir, and I'll be easy about it, because I don't want to slosh it out. Just kind of stir it up, let it kind of heat itself up. Got the temperature thermometer right here. Of course, it, you can't hardly see it because it's been used so much. It's got uh, blue and salts in it and everything else, but it still works. And when it messes up, I'll just send it to Brownells and they'll send me a brand new one. Because they got an unconditional lifetime guarantee. Look at here. Now, I want to bring this to your attention. See how violently it's boiling now? Well, you can either add water to it. But since I haven't got a gun in there right now, I'm just going to turn the flame down just a little bit. Now you see it's starting to ease down, but I don't want to cut the flame off. It'll maintain that temperature right there. Just common sense. As you do this, you'll see, you'll start using common sense with it. And uh, nothing hard about it once you start doing it and get the feel for everything. This right here heat up probably in about 10-15 minutes, you know, because it ain't got to be as hot as the bluing. Uh, I think about 185, something like that. But I got it marked on the thermometer, or temperature on the thermometer there. I don't know if you can see that or not. But anyway, now you see it. I hardly have a flame under there. It's not cut off. We got a nice calm boiling. That right there is a good boil for bluing. Now, now it's just kind of coasting, I guess, if you will. In other words, it's going to stay at the operating temperature, and I, and I ain't going to be using a lot of fuel at all. And I can go all day like this. But when I put the gun in there, it's going to cool it down, because the gun's going to be cold. Uh, from coming out of that cold water rinse, but it'll heat right back up. Just want to kind of keep this right here kind of stirred. When it gets a little low, I'll just add water to it. I won't add no more 90... 909 to it I'll just add a little water to it and bring you back up I like it to be about an inch before running over same way with my hot water bowl see I got it about an inch before running over and this right here is a rinse tank that I had built it's stainless steel and you just cut it on and it fills up and goes into a trough here you know and into the uh, tank outside okay number water so everything around here is set up and uh, environmentally friendly, I guess, if you will. The only way to do it is to do it right. God yeah, told me if you ain't got right time, if you ain't got time to do it right the first time, when you gonna find time to do it over? So that's always kind of stuck in my head. And another part of the lesson: do it right the first time, because you probably ain't gonna have time to do it over. Uh, not that I'm Mr. Perfect or anything. If something ain't right, well, let me know and we'll uh, improve on it until we do get it right. As soon as this is ready for uh, putting a gun in, I'll put the first gun in here, then I'll walk over here and I'll hit it for 10 minutes and they'll sit in there for 10 minutes. Then I'll come out of the rinse tank or out of the uh, 909 into the rinse tank and into the blue one. Let me bring this to your attention as well. Uh, of course, I cut the flame down and we don't have that violent boil. Now, we can keep our eye on that temperature gauge and it will start rising a little bit. You don't want it to get too much hotter than uh, 292, okay? Uh, 
it ain't gonna hurt it if it gets a little bit hotter, but 292 is where I like to keep it. Don't let it get out of that black block right there. And when it does start to get out of that black block, leave the flame alone for right now, because you ain't got no gun in it anyway. Just kind of cool it down with water. Kind of keep it in the black block by cooling it down with water. Remember how I showed you. That'll keep the black block, that'll keep the needle on the black block. And, uh, because if you get them too hot, you'll kill your, your blue and salts. Of course, I have had to heat them up, you know, to about uh, 310, and that's okay. I think the gunsmith told me he just had to heat his up to 330 for certain steels, but I definitely wouldn't get it no past, no hotter than that. Sometimes you gotta go 310, leave it in there for 15 minutes, put it in the cold water rinse, and then put it back in there like I do. That's my procedure anyway, but especially for nickel steel, like your old uh, Winchester Model 12s. Uh, that'll cause it, I mean, if not, they'll turn purple. If you want that nice deep black, you may have to heat them up just a little bit. And I found that cooling them down after 15 minutes into it, which I kind of kill two birds with one stone, I move them around a little bit to avoid the marks, like I, I told you earlier. And with that nickel steel, you can stick it back in that bluing for the last 15 minutes in that hotter temperature, and it seems like it really blues up good. And you know, a lot of this stuff, you're just gonna have to learn from experience. You know, not to stick a, a soft solder double barrel down in there. Of course, they tell you that on the directions. Make sure they're silver soldered, things like that. I've made notations on the wall there, you know, Winchester Double Barrel Model 24, you can blue it because they are silver soldered. You know, you'll just jot things down as this goes. There we are so far. Just waiting on the 909 where we can put our first gun in, thoroughly clean the hold off, and any uh, polish and residue that may have been left behind. So far, so good. All right, we're almost up to the operating temperature. Close to the mark, mark right there. And this here is still holding its own. Got a good little violet, not a real violet boil, but one that's about right. And we're still right there at our black mark there with very little heat. Once, you re once it reaches its temperature, you kind of coast through it. All right, I believe we're at operating temperature now. That's still holding its own really good. I hadn't really done anything to it. Right there at operating temperature, a good boil going on with a little flame. Uh, since I'm just one man here today, usually I'd be using my tongs, and I'm only gonna do this about one time. And I'll be having to use the tongs, but the first thing I'm going to do here is I got this piece of metal here Which enables me to pick this up That way I can kind of hold the camera and At least you can watch me put it in the 909 tank anyway So basically you just put it in there Watch that temperature. We don't want to get up no higher than what the operating temperature is. I'll just go over here and I'll hit the uh, timer for 10 minutes. Of course, it'll start dinging when it's ready to come out. Then I'll come out of this. And at this point, this right here will be flowing, flowing cold water. And I'll let it sit in there for a minute or two, no more than that. Then out of this, into this. 30 minutes probably leave it in there for 15 minutes take it out put it in the cold water rinse you know move everything around so we don't have no stripes on it and it's got screws and stuff in a little basket in there kind of agitate it a little bit that way everything kind of moves around that way I know everything will get a good bluing on it and then go on back over here for another 15 minutes which will equal 30 minutes but that's I might leave it in there just a little bit longer but anyway you get the idea so there we are right now in our 909 
I'm gonna cut the flame off because we're already at our operating temperature and it'll it'll stay there and of course when it starts dropping I'll just simply light the flame back up let me say this uh, I'll leave this in there the whole 10 minutes I might kind of agitate you know move it back and forth a little bit but I definitely won't take it out of there it'll stay in there it's full term and then come out of there and put in there in the rinse tank and then into the out of the rinse tank into the bluing tank you know the reason you don't the reason why i take it out about and you ain't got to do this folks you can leave it under the for the full 30 minutes but i just do that because of the way i've got them all racked up you know i don't like to just blue one piece at a time i like to rack each gun up in its own rack as you can see and i'll leave it in there for 30, you know 15 minutes then put it in the cold water rinse and I'll just kind of move everything around that way I know that everything's going to get a full blue in, and there won't be no stripes where it's been laying on the rack you know uh, because metal touching metal won't blue real good so if you do it that way that way I know it's going to get a good blue on it and uh, I ain't got to worry about you know stripes and the customer who won't be wondering well, what's a stripe done on the bottom of this you know um, so that's the reason why I do that and let me tell you this too whenever you do take it out of this don't sit there and look at it while you're uh while you've got it out over the bluing tank because what will happen is if it stays out there in a matter of seconds it'll start drying on there and when it dries on there uh you'll have spots in your bluing so you know don't don't get no real big hurt where you drop everything just ease it out of there shake it off come on over here and stick it in the, in the cold water rinse you know even at the end of it all when you're done with it my point is don't let the blue and salt dry on the gun i mean because if you do that the only way to get that off those spots is to take it back in there and repolish it i know a lot of people and i've done it myself pull them out of there check them all out you know then stick them back down in the tank and then wonder where the spots came from well that's because i let it dry on there and once it dries on there, you get a brown spot. That's why I've got my water tank next to my bluing tank. That way, I know it ain't gonna dry on there. You know, just, just like I said, you ain't gotta rush. Just take your tongs, pick it out, and shake it off. Come on over here and just casually stick it down in here. Keep it wet until all the bluing salts are off of it. Then you can take it out and look at it. Then, then you want to make sure when it's all said and done after your 30 minute full run is complete come out of this cold water rinse into the hot water boil for 10 minutes I believe it is yeah I got this up for 10 minutes hot water boil and then out of that after 10 minutes into the uh, water displacing oil now let me say this when it's in this hot water boil you'll notice foam coming up on top of the water and what that foam is, it's blue and salt that's in between where the uh, barrel screws into the receiver, uh, you know, places like that. Yeah, that cold water rinse won't get that out of there because it's hid down inside those little crevices and inside the pores of the metal. That's why you want to heat it up, open the pores up, and then it'll start foaming. And that's an indication that there's blue and salts left behind. I just take my ladle and I just easily, being careful not to scratch the, the, the gun, just easily take that foam off and just put it back in my blue and tanks uh, if you don't put it in this if you don't use this process if you don't put it in the hot water bowl in other words if you come out of this cold water rinse and then just stick it directly into your water displacing oil uh, you'll know it because after a couple of days you'll see something that looks like battery acid coming out around where the barrel screws into the receiver and things like that and what that is that's blue and salt that was left behind again kind of dangerous you know somebody get that on them get in your eyes or whatever you know so it's it's to your best interest and the customers and besides that it's just the only way to do it right is boil it out that way there ain't no more blue and salts in it put it in your hot water or put it in your uh, water displacing oil leave it in there for about i don't know I think I usually leave mine in there about 30 minutes, each gun. About as long as it takes to blue another one. About 30 minutes. Then I just put it up here and let it drain off, back off in the tank. That way I have no waste. Well, that stuff's not cheap. Uh, 
but yeah, you want to make sure you boil it. Don't don't skip this process. Don't skip none of the processes. I do it exactly the way I've got it set up. Just trust me, I, it works. We're almost ready to come out of the 909 into the rinse and then into the blue one. Okay, now we're fixing to come out of the 909. And I'm going to use the same procedure that I used a while ago. I'm going to cut my water on here. That's in the 909. So I'm going to just kind of use the same procedure here to lift it out of there and stick it down to the cold water rinse. Kind of agitate it like this right here. Kind of tilt it up so everything kind of pour out. Boy, we ain't got no waste. Then I'll go into my cold water rinse. And I'll let it sit in there for about no more than two minutes. Then after I'm satisfied with it, being in there and it's clean, I'll put it in the blue one. Now I won't be showing you putting it into the blue one because I can't use that procedure. I'll have to use these tongs here. Of course I have no cameraman down here, but I'll show it after I do put it in the blue one. But basically it's like this. I'll just let it sit in there, rinse off really good. Then I'll take the tongs and we'll go into the blue one bath. Okay, we're in the bluing bath now. Just put it in there. Had to use the tongs because we don't want to take a chance and get that close to it. Uh, now I'm fixing. I usually let mine set in there for about I don't know two or three minutes. It's probably been in there about a minute or two now. Still at my operating temperature. Sometimes I'll just kind of raise the flame up just a little bit. Until I get the bowl I want, then I may lower it down again. Mainly keeping an eye on that temperature. Then I'll come on over here and I'll set the uh, timer for 30 minutes. And of course, when it reaches 15 minutes, I'll take it out of there. Come over to the cold water rinse. Being real careful not to let that stuff dry on there. Uh, then I'll check it real good, you know, and move it around. That way we have no stripes on it. Then back out of the cold water rinse, into the balloon for the remainder of the blue and run which will be uh, 15 more minutes you know which will equal out about 30 minutes you know about 30 no more than 35 minutes total don't hurt it if you leave it in an hour and sometimes you might have to depending on what kind of metal it is but uh, anyway uh, we'll just sit here and wait it out for about 30 minutes and uh, for about 15 minutes anyway and I think you get the picture keeping our eyes on the the boil and keeping our eyes on the temperature basically. Alright, it's uh, going well. First gun in the balloon vats. Just checked it while ago. That's how your bowl should look. You know, you can kind of adjust that, making sure the temperature is not hotter than it needs to be. And you can just kind of, you know, quieten the flame down just a little bit. That'll adjust it, and if I don't do what you want to do without cutting the flame off, obviously you got to have the flame under there. Then you'll just put a ladle of water in there too. Now, of course, I've got my hot water rinse tank right next to the blue one, so when I light it up, it's going to make it even hotter. So what I'll have to do is accommodate by cutting this on down, and then the flame off this right here kind of keeps it heated up. See how that works? Kind of keeps it heated up, you know. Uh, so you just have to use common sense with it, you know. Basically, just making sure you got a good uh, roll and boil like that. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's already done, started bluing in there. Uh, I usually don't do this, but for the video's sake, get the safety equipment on. I got this glove on, it's a heat resistant glove, which is good. I just kind of want to show you. It hadn't even been there. It's been in there about five minutes. And you can see it's going to start turning black. I don't hold it out of there very long because, again, we don't want it to dry on there. But what I usually do is take my tongs and do this, kind of keeping an eye on everything, you know, and just seeing how the progress is going with it. But 
I wouldn't recommend doing that, but for the video's sake, I thought I'd, I could do that and get away with it this time, but most of the time we use our tongs for that. After about 15 minutes again, I'll, I'll check it again, put it in the cold water, and if I don't see any blemishes in it, you know, I'll move it around like I said earlier. Uh, I know I keep kind of going over it, but I can't stress enough about how important it is I've let that stuff dry on there. And like I said, you ain't even got to take it out of there, but most likely if you don't, if you rack them up like I do, you're going to have a stripe on the bottom of it that's not going to bloom. So that's the reason why I got my procedure set up this way. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. I done come out of the bluing into the cold water rinse. Uh, Basically, just put it in there, move them around a little bit, that way there's no stripes forming. Everything looks really good. Uh, now, fix and put it back in the uh, boiling and finish out the, the 30 minutes for it. Okay, now we're back in the boiling again. Uh, the remainder is about 15 more minutes. You'll notice the bubbles there. Usually, when you first put it in there, you do put it in the cold water, put it back in there. Basically, what it does is just getting uh heating heating the metal back up um, i took it out and put it in that cold water there moved everything around you know i had a i think i had some parts laying on the bottom of the basket and i just kind of moved them around a little bit uh, uh they recommend you don't uh, that you keep them about an inch off the bottom uh but if you move them around like i'm doing you don't ever have no problems and i've been doing it this way for years uh, basically metal touching metal it'll leave a, a place so that's the reason why I incorporated this uh, part of the bluing into the procedure you know 15 minutes in the tank take them out stick them over there move them around and put them in there for the remainder of the 15 minutes and uh, they usually turn out really nice and probably in about another I don't know about 10 minutes before they come out I'll go ahead and light up the hot water boil get everything adjusted for that then it'll come out of that bluing back into the cold water then I'll inspect it for any blemishes or anything like that that's the purpose of that and it'll get all that bluing salt off of it if any of it's left on there and then of course out of the cold water rinse if I'm satisfied with it and if I'm not I'll put it back in that tank there for a few more minutes but most likely I'll be satisfied with it because most of the time I am and then I'll put it in the hot water boil and of course we'll start our boiling procedure to get the uh, boiling salts out of the crevices. All right, we're almost ready to take this one out of the vat. I've already got the hot water boil tank lit up. And at this point, I'll go ahead, I guess, and go ahead and yeah, light the uh, 909 up. Let it go ahead and start heating up as well. Just let's keep an eye. Now you can see how that now is heated up and it's really boiling. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of accommodate it by just kind of slowing the heat down right here. I won't cut it completely off. I've got a little mirror up under there. I don't know if you can see it or not. And that allows me to look at the flames. By the time that comes out, that should be ready for the uh, hot water boiling process to take place. Meanwhile, there'll be one in here getting ready to go into the cold water rinse and then into the bluing. Just kind of let everything heat back up. Got plenty of time to do it. I guess what it all boils down to is um, while I'm dealing with this one right here, there's one in there that's uh, getting ready to go into the bluing tank. And you can see by adjusting this flame right here how it kind of controls that boil. It's not as violent now as it was. The flame's just barely going under there. Uh, meanwhile, I got more of my flame over here in the hot water boiler. Heating it up, getting it ready for uh, 
is ready to boil up the blue and out of the gun. It's going to come out of there in a minute. And while this is heating up, I'll kind of stir it a little bit. So we're not far from our operating temperature anyway, so. And once you get it all heated up, I mean, all you got to do is basically just warm it back up. I mean, don't take no time at all for that. Let me say this too while we got this opportunity. I see that my heat is just a little bit past the black there. I'm not enough to really speak of. It's good, but I don't really want it to get too much hotter than that. So I've done cut my flame down as low as I can. Uh, other than cutting this one right here down, and I don't want to do that. This is where I would take and cool it down with a ladle of water. Being careful not to hit the gun. You don't want to scratch it with a ladle. what it needed to do. All right, fix to pull that first wave out, put it in a cold water rinse, and then if I think it's in good shape, if I think they look good, and I believe they will, and what I mean by that is if it's got a good thick dark blue in on it, then I'll come out of the cold water rinse into the hot water boil. Meanwhile, I got one over here in the uh, 909 for the second round. And it's the same procedure from start to finish. So I've been went over everything that uh, you need to know. Uh, and then when I'm done bluing all these, I'll show you the end results. It basically, it'll come out of there into the cold water rinse. If I'm satisfied with it, it'll come out of there into the boiler tank. Then out of the boiler tank after about 10 minutes into the oil. And then up here on the rack. All right. I just wanted to kind of take a minute and show you this. This is the first gun right here. Now you'll notice the white foamy stuff. Well, what that is, that's blue and salt coming out of the crevices, coming out of the metal. The pores are now opened up. Any blue and salt's left behind, this is what this process does. This procedure right here does it. So when you get into it, don't leave this procedure out. Because it's important that you that you get all the blue and salts out of it. If you do leave this procedure out, you come out of your cold water into your water displacing oil, then what's gonna happen, your customer's gonna get it. Then he's gonna call you up and give you a good cussing because you got blue and coming out of it. He's gonna say, what's this white stuff coming out of this gun? It looks like battery acid. And then it ain't gonna work because that stuff's gonna get into the mechanisms and it's gonna start gumming it all up. So. I can't stress enough about how important it is to, to go through the boiling process. About 10 minutes is all it takes. And you can see it already forming up there. And what I do, like I said earlier, being very careful not to scratch the gun, just take your ladle. Cause that ain't nothing but blue and salts coming out of the gun. And just kind of ease it back into the tank. Usually I got my glove on, but for the video's sake, we just kind of, you know, want to demonstrate it. So this blue and salts, you don't have to put it in the tank, you can just dump it out, but it's hard to put it back in there. But anyway, I think you get the idea, and I'll just let that continue to, to boil, and I'll just you know, skim it off the top there, put it back in the tank, and after about 10 minutes, it'll be ready to come out of here into the water displacing oil. And that way I'll have confidence knowing that my customer won't have to ever worry about that and it'll be right. Meanwhile, we got this one over here in the 909. It's fixing to go into the hot water or cold water rinse. Then out of that, into the blue one. And let me add this in with it as well. Uh, if you do happen to get any splatter of the blue and salt on your skin, of course it's gonna burn because it's hot, but then it's gonna keep burning once it cools down because it's acid. Uh, what you do is you wash it off and then you neutralize it with vinegar, white vinegar. 
put a little bit on your, on your skin there, you know, where the where? splattered on you. Uh, and that usually neutralize it. Depending on how much you got on you, obviously, you got to use your own common sense whether you go to the doctor or not. But usually just your common splatters, you know, just wash it off and neutralize it with that vinegar. And for goodness sake, make sure you wear your face shield. But you definitely don't want to get it in your eyes. Uh, you know, you'll smell like vinegar, but that's okay. But anyway, that's a good safety tip, and I think it even tells you to do that in the Brinell's uh, directions. Okay, I came out of the 909 with the second gun. Went into my cold water rinse, rinsed it off really good for less than two minutes. Then out of that, into the bluing. Of course, I just took the uh, hot water boil first gun out of the hot water boil and then, and then I put it because it's extremely hot as soon as you pull it out of there it starts drying it instantly and that's okay and I didn't look with water then you just set it down inside the oil just plunge it down in the oil nice and easy don't scratch nothing and uh, just leave it in there for about 30 minutes meanwhile you're running your next uh, course here Right now it's a good time to go ahead and refurbish your hot water boil. I've done added water to it, so it's kind of warming up, you know, for the next cycle. I've done added water to the 909, you know. Uh, sometimes you may have to sweeten that a little bit, but most of the time you don't, because ain't nothing. The solution's still in there, but the water, you know, boils out or steams out, and it gets low, and of course you take some out, you know, drag out into the cold water rinse, but good to just let that drip off before you put it in the cold water rinse so you'll have to add a little water to that uh, so now we're on our second cycle and uh, it's the same procedure all is well okay fixing to run the third gun I just took it out after the 15 minutes and put it in a uh, cold water rinse there and it looks really good so I'm just going to let it run its course for the next 15 minutes uh, of course, you know the procedure will come out of there into the cold water rinse and then into the boiling tank. Um, since I don't have a cameraman down here, we'll stick with this procedure. This is the first one right here, and it's been in the uh, oil now for almost 30 minutes. Kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. Turned out really nice. And it's got the high polished blue in on it. Had some fancy engraving on it and all that looks really good. I had a 45 barrel in there with it, a couple other little items, but anyway, everything looks really nice. It's got a real high polish on the wood that goes with this particular rifle. Of course, I got that one and then that one there to do, which is an M1 carbine. Uh, we'll just put it back in the oil for the remainder of the 30 minutes. probably good to go right now but I like to leave it in there for about 30 minutes anyway uh, meanwhile we get everything else you know uh, heating up like it's supposed to just our heat on this you know after you do it a while you'll just use common sense with it I'm always keeping the uh, the basics in mind you know This is all common sense once you get used to it and get used to the procedure. Fix and take that rifle there and in the middle rack there and put it in here. It'll be the next one, which is a shotgun. So far, so good. All right, we're just about done with our bluing for the day. Everything turned out really nice. Standard finishes, high polishes. Got the last one in the vat here. Uh, anyway, I just hope this video uh, helped you out. Maybe uh, answered some questions you may have had. Uh, I think I've went over all the high points. The rest of it is just basically, you know, 
uh, setting your balloon room up and your routine up, you know, to your to your liking. Uh, like I said, I've been doing this for about 20 years. Uh, pretty much the same routine. Uh, just took the uh, instructions that Brownells had and just basically modified them a little bit to to where they would accommodate, you know, my balloon room and the way I did things. Uh, I know a lot of times they say just to glue one piece at a time, you know, put a piece of wire through it and all that, but truthfully, I, I like to just glue the whole gun at one time, and I bought these baskets from Brownells, and I kind of modified them a little bit. Uh, I got the wire baskets, and I got the little parts that go to that gun in that wire basket. Um, so that way I could just dip the whole gun, and each one of those baskets represents a, a, a firearm. And all I gotta do is come over here and get the basket and take it in there at the bench and put it together. And of course I got the wood in the wood room where it's curing out when I refinished it as well. So anyway, I hope this video helped you and if there's anything I can do for you, uh, feel free to give me a call. And uh, I really do appreciate everybody watching these videos. Oh yeah, one last thing. I've already got my tank emptied out, the hot water boil tank there, and I've got my 909 covered. They keep dust and dirt and stuff out of it. Uh, this tank here has already been shut off, and I done cleaned the sides of it by pouring water around the sides, uh, making sure that I took the thermometer out first, because we don't want to crack it with uh, by putting water on it. But anyway, when you get to this stage right here, and you're, it's ideal to wear the glove, but I don't have it on, but this stuff right here is called stop creep. And basically it's made for this. You just border your tank with it. It's like chalk almost, but it lasts forever because I bet I've had this brick right here for 15 years or more. You think it go away, but it don't. It seems to last forever anyway. I'm sure it will eventually, but anyway, you just basically border your tank. Run your bead across there like that, you know, make you a border with it. Keep your fans on, that way if you turn up any dust, it'll go on out the door there, out the fan, the vent. And you just basically do it that way, you know, nothing fancy. And anyway, what this does, blue and salts want to crawl up the tank. I mean, you could set it in here and come back in here next week and it'll go as far as that stop creep right there if you didn't put it in there especially if you're in one of these little tanks it'll come up over the tank and then you'll come in there and it'll be all out on the floor it's be a mess so that's why you definitely want to use this stuff right here and that way it won't go no further than that it's called stop creep it comes with uh, the brown nails blue and set in order as you need it um, and I believe I've uncovered all the major bases when it comes to the bluing. 